A frightening entity leaves a bloody trail. Sally, stop it! On tape, it's a stunning paranormal event. She scares the living daylights out of me. Welcome to Sightings. I'm Tim White. A ghostly presence on videotape. It's the one piece of hard evidence that's eluded our ghost investigations. Until now. When Sightings received a call from a beleaguered family in the Midwest, our team went to investigate. What they found was haunting activity unlike anything this Sightings crew had ever seen. The result was hours of bizarre, ghostly activity captured for the first time on videotape. It's happening here, somewhere in America's heartland. The family has asked that we not say exactly where they live, but it's a town like any other where people work, raise a family, and are laid to rest. There, however, the similarity ends. We were told at least one soul here is not at rest, and that her spirit is trapped inside this house. Spirit, ghost, entity. It has many names, and many ways of making its presence known. The family here fears ridicule and persecution. They've asked us not to use their real names, so we'll refer to them as Pamela, Jeff, and their infant son, Donnie. The first signs of something out of the ordinary began when the young couple moved into this 128-year-old house in January of 1993. At first, the haunting activity was subtle and only seemed to be occurring in one small bedroom at the top of the stairs. Pamela and Jeff had a weird, indefinable feeling that something wasn't quite right. Their usually docile dog started feeling it too. She would whimper and cry any time she came near that room. They now feel the persistent barking was a warning they did not heed. As these home videos show, after the birth of their son, Donnie, the bedroom was converted into a nursery. It was here that an entity began to show itself. Pictures of newborn Donnie were marred by strange blocks of free-floating light and shadow. It happened on roll after roll of film and with two different cameras. Even more bizarre was the discovery, when this photo was enlarged, that the crayon on the tablet seems to be held in space by an invisible hand. We tried to recreate this photo with wires, pins, and other tricks. We could not. Through a friend, Pamela contacted psychic Barbara Connor, who believes she can communicate with entities from the past. I was thinking it was a little crowded. Yeah, she doesn't like it. She says, too many people are in here. Get out. Within a few minutes of her arrival, Barbara began to communicate with what she felt was the spirit of a child. She said the spirit was that of a little girl named Sally and that she was there to protect the baby Donnie. Barbara believes that the blurs and streaks in dozens of family photographs are actually a physical manifestation of Sally. We wanted Edson Williams, a trick photography expert, to give us his opinion. Sightings obtained the original negatives and photos, and with the family's approval, had them analyzed to determine if anything in the camera or in the film processing could account for the bizarre images. One photo that I really caught my attention was the Christmas photos. The, the highlights that ran through the image. They're localized, they're not throughout the image, they're in very small regions, and they're running at different angles. I, initially, I tried to recreate this simply with a, a few quick tricks, and unfortunately, they did not work for me. It's a, it'd be a very difficult shot to recreate. Another photograph I found very interesting was one I had a small child's toy in a corner with a, a blue ghosting image around it. Uh, initially, I thought it possibly cut out a blue gel, which would be a, a blue plastic, clear plastic, and a wiggle that in front of the camera could recreate it. But the density differences were too varied. Photographic evidence is something I always question because my job is to create illusions photographically. But these several pictures that I was shown are very difficult to explain. The family believes this is evidence of Sally, the lost spirit of a long dead girl. And like a macabre version of Mother Goose, when Sally is good, she's very, very good. And when she's bad, she's horrible. According to Pamela and Jeff, this is Sally's handiwork. They say a swirling, frigid aura announces her presence. Then Sally leaves welting, bloody slashes on Jeff's bare flesh, as documented in these photos and verified by many eyewitnesses. So far, Jeff has been the only victim. 
When our sightings crew arrived to investigate, the first step was to videotape interviews with Pamela and Jeff. These interviews were important, but the director had given strict orders to immediately turn the cameras on any strange activity as soon as it occurred. It was during this first interview session that the entity made its presence known. Jeff and Donnie watched from just behind the camera as Pamela was being interviewed first. We had gone over to my in-laws. We had come home. Um, shortly afterwards, we found all the stuffed animals that were in As Pamela areas. described a previous encounter with Sally, noise from a backyard chainsaw started to interfere with the videotaping. The windows were closed. The cats were downstairs with us. Um, just nothing natural could happen. As Pamela waited for the noise to stop, Jeff called out. Is it, is it going? She don't like her, but here it is. <laughs> Sally, stop it. What? How did that happen? You don't know. I, I... Sally? Come on, walk in there. Walk in there. And, and get a towel and clean it off his arm. Stay on the What's going on? Uh, I gotta get my sense of it. She's right here, because it is freezing right here. It is freezing. I feel it. All you do is you feel this cold go through you. That's how I just Sally? Look back. Okay, Sally, it. we're gonna stop. Us? Sally, we're gonna stop until Barbara comes here, okay? When Barbara comes, she'll cool she'll right talk here. to you and let you know. Right here. Uh -huh. I can feel it. We're we're interviewing. It's hot. We've turned the air conditioner off for sound purposes, but it is cold right here in this part of the room. And the air conditioner is off. Mm-hmm. I just felt Look at that. The cold Look at that. Like freeze me over here. This is the same thing that occurs when Holy she's scratched his face. Holy or he's had scratches across his forehead or down his arm. She does this when she's upset. Gosh, the shit. <laughs> I know, my heart's pounding too. I think I'm a little excited. I gotta tell you. Hi. We've had a little excitement this morning. Oh, really? Already? Yeah. The family asked psychic Barbara Connor to join our investigation. They felt Barbara could communicate with Sally and help calm her down. Feeling good? <laughs> What's this? That's what she just did. She just did this? Yeah. I feel her now. Yeah, she's here. Hi, Sally. What's going on? Excitement. Yeah. She's excited. It's really cold. Okay, okay, it's okay. Yeah, it's, uh, she's excited about all this. Is she yeah. liking it, or yeah. is she upset? She's upset. She's a little upset. Um, what's going on here? She says, I like it, but it's scary. Yeah, well, honey, it's scary for us, too. Yeah, We've that's never what done I, anything like this. That's what I told her. I said, I said, no, it's everybody's uptight with this. I, she scares the living daylights out of me. To be honest with you, I, I'm going to add this right now. She's right here with me right now. <laughs> I'm feeling something really cold shoot around my stomach. Um, we asked Jeff to describe what he was feeling. He looked like he was in pain, but Jeff didn't respond. For a moment, he couldn't speak. <sighs> I've lost my breath. I'm sorry. Today, in the chair, as you guys were interviewing my wife, I was sitting in the rocking chair with my son. He was playing with a little toy, and we were tilted a little forward so we could watch the interview through the doorway. When this cold just shot through my arm, and it's done it before, I knew the feeling. It's just, I can't explain the cold. It's, it freezes your bones, everything. And as I looked towards my arm, I had four scratches that were bleeding as I looked at him and it's really frightening yeah. <sighs> she's just went right through my midsection I don't... oh my god look look I oh, look, they're forming. can't come up with an explanation why she does this. It's forming right there. She no. tends to do this to me because I upset her sometimes. I And she wants to be noticed, I think, today. <laughs>
This family has asked to remain anonymous. Uh, what's happening inside their house is so bizarre, they don't want to become just another media event. When we return, our investigation continues. But the current case in the Midwest is clearly different. From day one, the crew was experiencing unexplainable haunting phenomena. And they were getting it on tape. It's a sensation like uh, the air conditioning on your automobile. If you put your hand up right in front of the vent, you feel the air Real blowing. Fresh, Real fresh. Cold. But if you move yeah. your hand away from the vent, it goes away. Oh. Oh, boy. That one. I think she's it's, messing with you. It is swirling. Our sightings director is Greg Cook. Is he was excited about the presence of strange cold spots that would come and go without warning or reason. It is so cold right here. Oh, this is electrical charge you're talking about. Did you feel it? Did you feel it? <laughs> yeah. It's like... It's like a, a mild electrical mild. shock. Yeah. Right there. Ooh, my God. Can you feel it? Yeah. Oh, oh it's a Jesus. Electrical shock. Right here. That is unbelievable. Just... Paranormal investigator Howard Heim brought in instruments that could measure the cold and magnetic energy everyone in the house was feeling. Howard Heim has documented over 100 reported hauntings throughout the world. Strangely enough, as soon as he arrived, our video camera began to malfunction. There was breakup, usually a sign that there's been some kind of electrical interference. Can you feel this? Come here. No, I cannot. As soon as you came over, it went this way. You can feel it? Well, let's take a few minutes. It's 77.7 .7 degrees Fahrenheit in here. This dropped a point. It did instantly drop point from, from point 0.7 to just point just 6. Just no, wait right there. It just dropped another point. It's dropping again. Point 0.4. It dropped again. It's point 0.3 now. And I gradually and it dropped a point again. It's now point 0.2. It keeps getting cooler in this room. It's like a narrow shaft of yeah. cool air. Mm -hmm. It is. And my hand is, I can feel it coming down, but his hand's on top of mine. And if you put yours underneath, you should be able to feel it as well, even yeah. though... Ooh, I actually feel, feel it slightly feel, cooler. Feel that? Yeah. Blowing around? Yeah. I actually feel like a small uh, circumference hand, about uh, four inches in diameter coming straight down. And our hands are blocking the airflow. Mm -hmm. hmm. That was interesting. It was almost like a narrow thing it's hitting the back of my hand. The instruments picked up both an increase in electromagnetism and a measurable decrease in room temperature. But no instrument could explain what happened just a few minutes later in the kitchen. Pamela was showing Barbara a teddy bear that had been inexplicably burned. Later in the same spot, Sally seemed to be telling Pamela she was the fire starter. My husband found this kind of half fresh, half dead flower singed around the edges. Is it possible that Sally burned the rose in reaction to Pamela's discussion about the teddy bear? We went back to that earlier moment on our raw field tapes. The rose was there on the windowsill, but at this point it appeared fully red with undamaged petals. Who could have burned that rose without anyone seeing it or smelling it in the space of less than five minutes? That's incredible. The interior leaves are burnt around the edges with no damage to the overlapping leaves, as if they were individually burned and then assembled. Mm. That is bizarre. That you can't you can't duplicate this. This cannot be duplicated. Let's uh, go see, show me where she lives, <laughs> so to speak, here, and, uh... Um, this yeah. used to be this cradle, but we've put it in here as, like, a gathering for her toys, things that she's allowed to play with and not get into trouble for. In the bedroom that had been the source of so much haunting activity, electromagnetic field readings were normal at first. Then Pamela felt that Sally had arrived. Oh, man. Yeah. Right here. The magnetometer needle jumped. Look at it. We're two and a half. Now we're at three. I can actually feel it between my fingers. It's very light, but it is noticeable. It's still me. During our investigation, everyone who entered the house felt an eerie, ghostly presence. But only Jeff claims to have actually seen a manifestation of Sally. 
I walked over to the kitchen cabinet, opened the cabinet and got out a glass, poured my orange juice, started to take a drink, and as I turned around, there was a little girl standing not more than three foot away from me, just as plain as you are to me now. Just standing there with this plain look on her face, just looking at me like she was curious about me too. And it, oh, I can't explain the, <laughs> the feeling I got. I dropped the glass, the glass shattered. And as I dropped the glass, she was gone just as quick as she was there. It was just gone. Sally never materialized for our low light intensity viewing equipment. But our normal video camera did pick up perhaps the most stunning paranormal event ever recorded on tape. It came without warning as our cameras were in the process of recording one final scene. Sally, can you see through it? Is it working? Yeah. And, take and go it up? The top. Very slowly, yeah. Same j Look, one's starting to bleed. There's a whole new. Oh, look, look at that. Look oh at God. that. Oh, look at that. Oh, my God. It actually... I knew just, she was around. <laughs> it's this nice dark one where look. it's bleeding. <laughs> look, look at that. Look at, the look at that. It. It's standing on down. Look there it is. Bottom. Look at it. We trained our cameras on Jeff's torso for nine minutes, the entire duration of the bizarre event. What first appeared as scratches eventually grew into long, thick, bleeding welts. No one had a logical explanation. Been scratched, to be honest with you. It just simply appeared. You lifted your shirt, the same scratches were there. You put this to your stomach, and all of a sudden blood started to ooze out. And this is like the most profound thing I've ever seen in all parapsychology. I've seen and felt a few things myself, but it could be suggestion. But the, this is not suggestion at all. This is fact, and you have it on tape. When our crew returned from the Midwest, the excitement in the sightings offices was palpable. Our videotape has become the object of intense interest for paranormal investigators like Kerry Gaynor. We asked him to view the tape, making careful examination yeah, in side-by-side -side views of the before and after frames taken while this bleeding scratch welted up before our camera. When we return, I'll be joined by field director Greg Cook and world-renowned parapsychologist Kerry Gaynor as we continue this remarkable investigation. Coming up next, historic contact with an entity. And later, from America's UFO hotspot, unprecedented daylight sightings captured on tape. Joining me now is sightings director Greg Cook. Greg supervised the crew on site during our investigation. Greg, you've earned your stripes in the news business for a long time. You've worked for 60 Minutes and elsewhere. Has anything like this ever happened before? Never, Tim. Uh, the frightening thing was that it happened early in the day, at 10 o'clock in the morning, with all of the movie lights on and all the people through the house. It wasn't like what you would presume you see when you see a ghost. It didn't happen late at night under candlelight and that sort of thing. It was in the confusion of the crew arriving mm -hmm. and uh, in daylight hours, and everybody felt it. It was, it was, that was the frightening thing. You actually felt this thing happen. Everybody in the crew did. We saw the, uh, we saw the rows and we saw the marks on the man's body. There was another incident that you didn't have yeah. the bib? There was a shot that I thought might be interesting if she were to walk in carrying the baby, and the baby at the time was sitting in the high chair. So I said, let's just, you know, move to this area of the mm -hmm. room, walk in, and we'll begin. She took off the baby's bib, took 10 steps mm -hmm. to the left and walked back in again and went to put the bib on. It would not attach. The, the plastic cap mm -hmm. beneath the bib had burned in the 20 seconds it took for her to walk away from the bib. I immediately smelled it mm -hmm. and could, could smell a, a sense of charcoal and burning, but the plastic had melted, but there was no fire damage to the top or bottom of that piece of plastic. And that occurred right while we were there. And it was a sort of a frightening moment. That, that did occur at night, and uh, I felt a little uneasy about staying well, there. You're a skeptical guy. Uh, yeah. Couldn't all of this have been faked somehow? No, no. If we'd gone there and perhaps what you saw was, was cutting and bleeding, you might question, how did that happen? The fact was that everybody who came Film members, other friends of theirs, neighbors mm -hmm. who had been there for the time of the taping, everybody in the room felt the same sensation of cold. I think there's a lot of interpretation there. Mm -hmm. But I do know that what I felt and what everybody else in our crew felt was uh, a definite electrical energy. Mm -hmm. It moved around the room. You could follow it around the room. It wasn't something that we just kind of said, well, we thought it was there. It was there. 
Well, Greg, since you filed this report, Sightings has contacted parapsychologist Kerry Gaynor and asked for his insight. Mr. Gaynor is best known for his investigations of the now famous entity and poltergeist cases. Mr. Gaynor, you've had a chance to look at our field videotapes. What do you think? Well, I think it's very exciting. The, the nice thing for me as a researcher is that the cameraman held the camera on the blood spot from the moment it started to the moment the welts appeared. He never cut away. So we have about eight or nine minutes of raw footage, which I have examined. And it's very interesting. It's very exciting. I spent a great deal of time trying to determine which cases are worth investigating and which are not. And I think this one is. What are some of the more common signs of a haunting? Things that show up here as well as other cases you've looked into? Well, one of the things I was intrigued by were the, the bears that were found in the middle of the room. And they went out of the room and they put the bears back, they came back and one bear was found in the middle of the room. This like poltergeist? That's right. This suggests a very playful kind of experience. And we come across this a lot. People take their clothes out, they get up the next morning, they're back in the drawer again. Just playful type phenomena. You think this family is at threat, in danger? Well, I think there are different types of things going on in this house. I wouldn't want to think I wouldn't think there's one explanation. The, the, the bears appearing in the middle of the room is a, is a playful type poltergeist experience. But the scratches on the man's stomach and his arm, and uh, according to his testimony, he was yanked out of his bed. Those are pretty terrifying experiences. And yes, I, I'm a little concerned about that. We'll continue to look into it. Parapsychologist Kerry Gaynor, thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you. Recently, we brought you the story of a Midwestern family that's been plagued by bizarre haunting activity. Well, from our initial investigation, the videotape that our sightings crew brought back was unlike anything we'd ever seen before. We brought in renowned ghost investigator Al Rober to join our team, and along with the crew, Al and I went to meet the family. Hi, how are you? The family wishes to remain anonymous. We're using pseudonyms here and concealing the father's identity. How are the um, the scratches that you had that we saw before? Are they healing? Well, this is set here scarred. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the uh, ones on my stomach are healing that pretty good. Just two weeks before, these bleeding welts materialized on camera during our first sightings investigation. The tape of that event was analyzed by Carrie Gaynor world-renowned parapsychologist who was lead investigator on both the entity and poltergeist cases. He asked to view the images of this bizarre yeah, event side by side. On the right, a frame of video with a long bleeding welt. Yeah, the on the left, there. an image taken eight minutes earlier when our camera first began to roll. There's no welt visible. The exciting thing for me as a researcher is that the camera didn't pull away. It was there the whole time and that severely reduces the, the possibility of any kind of hoax. Most of the cases we come across are playful, mischievous, bizarre, weird, and a lot of them have just normal natural explanations. This case that involves scratch marks, this seems a little more frightening and something that we should be a little more cautious about in terms of, of studying the phenomena. The phenomena in this house, according to the family who lives here, are caused by Sally, the spirit of a seven-year-old child. They believe it's Sally who causes paranormal activity, like lights flickering on and off mysteriously, as seen in this home video. Thank you, Sally. Yeah, on the left side. Right. Family photos have turned up with unusual blurring and discoloration, confounding our photo experts. During our initial investigation, paranormal researcher Howard Heim felt and recorded strange sensations of cold and electromagnetism. I actually feel like a small uh, circumference about uh, four inches in diameter coming straight down. Sightings camera operator Phil Lapkin was startled when an intense charge of static electricity began swirling around him. Our audio equipment was able to record a snapping sound along the floor and around his legs. On our return to the house, we asked ghost investigator Al Rober to gather additional hard data at the site. His equipment can monitor electromagnetic energy and minute temperature fluctuations. He photographed and examined items that were supposedly touched and in some cases burned by the entity. There's a chemical that's built on this. Tim? Yeah. I would assume from that, Greg, that you are feeling... Well, that... Something. Air conditioner is off. I feel it blowing right through here. Do you? Well, a little bit. I'm going to move over here and see if I can feel the same thing, though. Yeah, 
Right. Now we're in front of a window and an air conditioner right. that's off. Right. All right, I, can, I, I definitely can feel a sense of, uh, of some air moving there. Yeah. Let, let, let's sit back down and talk. And Tony, especially Taylor, as we sir, continued videotaping, I was not the only member of the sightings crew who seemed to feel a strange sensation of cold air circulating in small, isolated patches. It happened again and again. Oh, man. That's weird. It's right, yeah, right here. Ooh, and boy. the hair on your arms uh, is standing up. Right here. I can see a, see the hair yeah. over in this area here. Ooh, just right, right here. No, no, behind you too. In and of itself, the sensation of cold and static electricity was intriguing, but not proof of the existence of Sally. However, the sensations, some were feeling more strongly than others, were usually followed by physical harm to Jeff. More. Oh, well, now that's very interesting. Would you be okay if I sit down? <laughs> why don't you sit? Why don't you sit down? I can t I can tell that uh, you're you're losing your breath right now. <laughs> Sally, what did I tell you? Sally, we see you. Uh, we know you're here. Whoever or whatever was responsible for these painful scratches struck repeatedly throughout the day. At one point, new welts began to form on Jeff's stomach. Then, I was shocked to see mysterious welts forming on his forehead. This whole spirit thing scares me, and it just, some of the things she's done, she's lit fires, and I, you know, I think, well, if she wants to hurt me, why couldn't she just light me on fire, or whatever she does to some of the other things around here? But yeah, this is as far as she goes. Al, are you saying that virtually everything that you've seen here today could be explained through psychokinesis or some sort of projection? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. Understanding his feelings here and his intense fear, he's very, he's very frightened and uncomfortable being thrust into this environment. That's not to say that there isn't uh, a little girl ghost walking around because in cases when you do have a poltergeist, they seem to draw off the same energies. What would your advice be to the couple living here? Um, one of the things I would, I would tell them would be to try to document some more of this. Uh, another thing that I would do, I would certainly recommend them to get rid of the toys in the corner and get rid of any encouragement that, that is now going on for this little girl ghost. Whether the source of this bizarre activity lies within Jeff or in an outside entity who craves attention, the result is still unexplainable. What type of energy could create the frightening, diverse phenomena occurring here? Being on site, observing the ghostly activity as it happens, has been a disturbing experience. It's clear that this case merits continued investigation. And whatever comes of it, uh, we will try and pursue it as openly and honestly as we can here on... Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share to keep fascinating content coming here at Nightmare Nexus.